I just wondered how important you thought it was to share these sort of considerations with students as this type of reflection um, with students as part of the course. Mm. Because it seems to me that um, this is very important. One thing is a room of, of teachers or educators. Mm. Another thing is communicating many of, the, of these ideas to our students. And whether any studies have been done which have perhaps followed through students who have been um, consciously prompted to participate in this type of reflection, reflection on these issues, and whether it's had a positive effect on their learning ability. I don't think that, I don't, I think there is, <clears throat> now, this is an interesting question because it concerns not just the age factor, but also other aspects of second language acquisition research, you know. People are saying that people, that learners should be m m allowed to become more aware of the process, okay, and what's, what's, what's revealed about the process by, by research. I think, yeah, they, what, what, what they say in the literature is that uh, there, are only, only, there are only anecdotal accounts of the advantages of this, but uh, that's the problem. But uh, actually, there's a, there's, a, there's a good research project for somebody there, and looking at the extent to which awareness of, of various aspects of language acquisition as a process you know, has an impact on learning success. But, I, but I, I, I certainly agree with you that for very practical reasons, you, we should tell learners that they're not past it at age 15. <laughs> I mean, clearly, uh, and, and, and they should discard any notion that, 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 uh, that if they haven't learned at age three and a half, they're, they're, they're done for. Actually, some people put the critical period, uh, I mean, one of the things about the critical period hypothesis that it has various, um, uh, there are various estimations of the time at which the critical period ends. And uh, for some people it ends at 12 months. A 12 months it over. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it's true, if it's true, well, we're all uh, wasting our time. But of course, uh, actually, but the other thing is that even people who believe in the critical period hypothesis, okay, don't think of it as particularly relevant to, to, to instructional context, okay? We can, go, we can go a long way in instruction, even if there is a critical period, you know, and uh, um, uh, we, we should not, we should not um, believe the, no, the, 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 um, the fantasy that, you know, um, uh, age is, 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 is a, 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 the all-important factor in an educational context. And, and we should tell people about, you know, learners who have started at age 21 and are now part of the you know, native speaker community, actually. Not that that is necessarily, necessarily uh, the, the aspiration people have. People don't want necessarily to become English speakers in the sense of being confused with native speakers. But they, they, can cert they should certainly be told that uh, they can go a very long way in the language at any age. Even at eight, at my, I'm going to learn Hungarian uh, starting in October. Uh, I, I'm moving to Hungary next year, and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to at least be able to do the basics in Hungarian within a year, for example. So it isn't. It isn't. I, I'm, I'm confident, and I, from what I knew, know about uh, older learners generally, uh, I, you know, I have no, I have no doubt that I'll achieve as much as I want to achieve in, in Hungarian. So, um, and uh, yeah, the, the message should get out somehow in, 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 from teachers, you know. I have a question about the Irish um, experience that you'd said that <clears throat> it was um, not successful. And I was curious if you know more information about how many hours were taught and what if they did other subjects than, rather than just teaching the language? Yeah, okay. Oh. This, uh, um, well, the typical, um, the, the typical rate of instruction is about one hour uh, per day, per school, school day. Uh, that's in normal schools. There are immersion schools in, in Ireland where they, they learn all the subjects except English through Irish, and they, they have a better record. Um, I'm, I mean, no, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, um, there, are, there are certainly uh, things to be said for starting a language early, okay, uh, in terms of language awareness, in terms of cultural awareness, okay, and there are certainly schools in Ireland which, which um, do relatively well, but but the fact is that 
You know, the research in Canada demonstrates that even in immersion schools, okay, it isn't the case that the early immersion students do better in the long run than the later immersion students. Okay, so I mean, there, there, I mean, there studies like that, uh, the studies of that uh, phenomenon in the, in the 80s by Bridget Har Harley. Um, I, but I, I mean, the, uh, do you know Ireland at all? Have you been to Ireland? Compared to the Catalan model here that now it's all immersion in Catalan and then the people are learning Spanish as a second language yeah. and there's some debate about how many hours should be taught in Spanish and then of course English as a second or third yeah. language. So I, think, I think the situation here is very different. Okay. For, for one, for, I mean we could talk about this but the sociolinguistic situation is very different in terms of there's a very narrow baseline of uh, native speakers of Irish. I mean there's not, a, there's not there aren't areas large areas in Ireland where, where Irish is spoken. On an, you go to the, the so-called Gaeltacht areas and you, you, you don't necessarily that even there hear much Irish. You know. there, it, 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 there, there are estimates of the number of major, native speakers of Irish vary. Okay? I mean, they, from 10,000 to 100,000, but no more than 100,000. There's certainly no more than 3% of the population of Ireland speak, speaking Irish uh, on any kind of regular basis. And so that, that's, a, that's a different situation from the situation in Catalonia. And uh, I think what, what it, what's happened in Cal Catalonia is that the, the whole revitalization uh, re re effort has been m richer and wider than just, just doing, having the, the, the language in the primary school. Okay? So a lot was, uh, the point I was making was that too much was put it uh, late at the door of the, of the schools, especially the primary schools. The, the, and that just doing that, just starting the language early, was able, one able to, was unable to uh, solve anything really at all. Uh, the, the, the other things, if, if the, the Ireland had really been serious about re revitalizing Irish, much more should have been done than that. But um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the conditions uh, in relation to the teaching and learning of Irish were ideal, they weren't. Very often, um, for example, schools were not very rich and they didn't have the materials. I mean, there were all kinds of problems with the teaching of Irish, having to do with um, resources and, and training of personnel and so on. But, uh, but the point is, the point I was making was that just having the language, uh, language in the schools early didn't really solve anything, didn't, didn't, rec didn't rec rescue the situation. I, I was saying, I think I, going beyond the Irish situation, I mean, uh, even in situations where the conditions are excellent, okay, I mean, in, in, here in Catalonia, English is taught in the schools how many hours a week? Yeah, well, yeah, three hours a week. Well, it's, that's sufficient to uh, maybe, if it's done well, to, to arouse a certain interest on the part of the children. But it will it will pay it will have no make no difference at all to the the uh, uh, in terms of ultimate efficiency. I mean I think people know that and people certainly Cameron uh, uh, Unioth's work has demonstrated it very very comprehensively. So um, yeah, there may be some reasons for having primary school languages, but uh, second languages, but uh, advantaging people in terms of efficiency wouldn't be one of them. Sorry. <laughs> right, okay. So thank you so much, David, mm -hmm. for, for this very inspiring talk. We, we enjoyed it a lot. And uh, I'm just asking everybody to thank you, uh, David, and we'll go on to the coffee. Thank you.